Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And today we're gonna to take a close look at M Dynamic EQ for Melda Production. This is an incredible EQ that has so many features, I can't even cover them all in a very long video, never mind the short video content that I usually make for this channel. So in this particular video, I'm gonna show you the basics things that kind of points of interest inside of the plugin and things to use a dynamic EQ for just in general. I'm going to show you how to tame a certain frequency that might be a little bit too loud in a vocal, for example. I'm going to show you how to do external sidechain routing to carve out the frequency range of some piano and strings to make room for the vocal and leave it an area to shine and just some other features inside of this incredible VSD plugin. So first of all, this is the vocal I'm working with. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal? Tell me is this real? So there are two points inside of that vocal that are really much louder than the rest. And in fact, if I move this out of the way, you can see them visually here. One is right here and the other is a little bit less, but still quite vis uh, visible right here. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? So my objective here is to use the dynamic EQ to suppress that and only that from the vocal take. And really what I'm going to look to do is suppress the fundamental frequency or harmonic inside of that part, not the entire part vocal, otherwise I could just use a compressor or something, but just the fundamental frequency. So the first thing we need to do is identify the fundamental frequency. And if I play this here and use my pointer, I've been looking for you. I can get kind of close to it by hovering over. You'll see the text box next to my pointer that gives me the information. There are also some really cool views inside of here, like I can pull up the frequency. That's a little bit more broad than what we're looking for. I can pull up the keyboard, which might actually point me to the note value. There are some other cool ones like the drums over here, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And if I come into settings and then I come into uh, graphs and then turn on peaks, it will actually give me the dialog box for any peaks inside of the frequency. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? So you can see the dialog box there. So the next thing I want to do is come into settings and right here inside of main settings, there's a freeze button. So I'm going to look to freeze it right when that peak is happening so I can actually see the information and manually input the frequency value. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal? Tell me is this real? Okay, so now I've frozen it and I can see it's an E4 and I can actually see the frequency value here as well. So I can right click this frequency node to be able to enter any values in. You can actually do it right from the node itself, but I do want to show you this main panel here because we are going to talk about dynamics more uh, in depth than what you have control over on the frequency node itself. But what we want to do is come to the frequency, go ahead and just enter that frequency value. And it's 655.0, so I'm going to go 655. Okay, so now that's there. And in fact, let me go ahead and close out of the advanced properties over here and just show you what you have available uh, right inside of the graph or the spectrum here itself. To make this node dynamic, you need to click and drag down to add, add a carve, or you can actually click and drag up to add a boost to that particular frequency. So let's just go ahead and try it on boost for a second. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? So you can hear how when that frequency happens, it actually gets boosted. And obviously that's the opposite of what we're looking to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it down. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? So that does the trick, but obviously Q value wise, we're way too wide and it's carving out way too much. It's taking away some of this, it's taking away a little bit of that. And really we're only looking to tame this one harmonic. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? Okay, so still it's way too much, but you can get the idea of what we're looking to do here. So if I right click this again and bring it up over here, I can have control over the dynamics. Right now, my big issue before we dial in how much we want to carve out by way of gain reduction is that if I play it, I've been looking for you. I've been looking is still carving out a little bit because there is that frequency happening during those parts of the, the track, but I don't want that. I want those to be as natural as possible, and I only want it to come in when that uh, the big part is happening. So that's where the threshold comes in, and I can control that right here, 
let's see right around here and just see if we're going to get any gain reduction happening until those two peaks. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal. Okay, so that's quite good. We're getting the first one, which is the bigger one, but not much of the second one. So I'm actually going to reduce the threshold here a little bit. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? And that's really good. So now, as I said before, the first peak is actually much more strong than the second one. And now we're getting a bigger reduction when the peak is the really strong and just a little reduction for that second peak. It just sounds better. It sounds smoother and it sounds more even throughout the entire vocal take. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? Tell me what's the... And of course, we can go in and fine tune these things even further, but I'm going to leave that for now. The next thing I want to show you is how to do an external sidechain, which is another thing that this M dynamic EQ is really, really good for. So if I come in here and again, let's just go ahead, come into presets. There are a ton of presets, by the way. I'm just going to double click to load up the default here for now. But let's go ahead and listen to the vocal with this piano. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal. Tell me, is this real? And if I add in the strings as well. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal. Tell me, is this real? You can see that the strings in the piano are really masking the vocal. And this is where a really precision-based surgical external side chain for a dynamic EQ comes into play. Now this is mixed terribly. This is mixed just for effect here in the tutorial so I can show you what's going on and just to like let you see exactly what it's doing. It would be done to a much less degree and obviously my piano and my strings would be mixed differently, but let's just go ahead and check out how to set it up and then how potent it can be. So I've got M Dynamic EQ here on the piano. And the first thing I wanna do is again, come into settings. You'll see down here at the bottom, I have an analysis category on the main settings page. And what I wanna do is actually turn on sidechain and output. When I route the vocal into this instance of N Dynamic EQ, I'll be able to see the spectrum of the vocal so I can make decisions on where to place my frequency nodes with that information. So that's just the first thing I'm gonna do here. The next thing I gotta do is inside of Ableton Live, come in from the vocal, as the side chain. And if I go ahead and press play now. I've been looking for you. Why you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal. So I can see the spectrum of the piano and the vocal. I'm gonna go ahead and bypass the strings for now, and then we're just gonna duplicate the process later. But for now, let's go ahead and make just some decisions on where I should carve, what frequencies I should carve out of this piano to make way for the vocal. I've been looking for you. Why you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal. So right around this range, and this is where the areas might come in handy if you turn it on the frequencies. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting for? You know, from uh, pretty much the entire low midsection to about halfway through the midsection is what we want to carve out. So what I'm going to do is click and drag this over right around there and maybe double click to add another point. And I'm going to make these dynamic by right clicking and I'm going to come in here dynamics and just pull it down. I'm going to say, you know, really carve out some stuff. I'm going to keep my attack fairly quick. Right now it's on auto, but I want it to be super fast. So I'm going to pull up the attack and release times pretty fast, though you can leave it on auto because it does a great job by itself. But just just to show you that you can manipulate that. And what I want to do inside of here is turn on sidechain by clicking right here. And now if I play this, I've been looking for you. Why are you acting formal? You can see that the carving is taking place only when the vocal is coming in. And this is just precision based stuff. You know, let's come into gain and just make sure we're at zero here. It's just a better way to do it. Rather than suppressing the entire frequency range of the piano, I only need to suppress certain frequency range that are really inducing what's called masking. And you can see that inside of here where the two frequencies are both really spiking. That's what you want to mask out. It's just going to make a better mix, especially when you do it with something that's already mixed really well and you do it to a, only need to do it to a small degree. It's just going to really open space up for whatever you want to focus on. I'm going to do the same thing here. I can just click right here and it will, with, if I have my settings open, it will stay there. I can also cycle through them by clicking right here as well. You can see here I've got band two and band four, so I can cycle through them there. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. Dynamics, going to make sure I'm at zero over here and just turn my auto release up uh, like this. I've been looking for you. Why are you acting? 
And you can see if it's not reacting to the vocal, it's because we've forgotten to hit sidechain inside of here. I've been looking for you. Why you acting formal? Tell me what's the deal. Tell me, is this real? So now, not only are we only carving out the frequency range that is conflicting with the vocal, but when the vocal is not happening, the entire frequency range of the piano is allowed to pass through. And that's the, the basics here. Now, if I take this instance and control it and drop it on the strings and turn them on inside of the project. I've been looking for you. Why you acting for me? Tell me what's the deal. Let's actually come in and open that up because the strings have more high frequency content than the piano. I might need to add a third band. I've been looking for you. And I do, right around the mid highs. Let's go ahead, double click, right click to see those. Again, pull in dynamics. You can leave this one pretty broad with the cue. I'm gonna just again, make sure I'm at zero here. Turn on side chain. I've been looking for you. Why you acting for me? Tell me what's the deal. Okay, so that's what it sounds like with the ducking. Let's come in and bypass both of these plugins and remember where we were to begin with. I've been looking for you. Why you acting for me? Turn them back on. I've been looking for you. Why you acting for me? And if I go ahead and mute the output of the vocal, the sidechain will still react to it. It's like a ghost system at this point, but we can really hear what's actually happening by way of carving out those frequencies in the piano and the strings. And now if that vocal weren't there to begin with, So it's just a better way to do that. Now, if I had a, like a, just a side chain compressor on there or a one filter band EQ, it would just be completely leveling out the entire playing field, completely mudding up and changing what my song feels like. This is just a better way to do it. And with M Dynamic EQ, it's completely possible. I do want to point out that you have five dynamic filter bands inside of M Dynamic EQ, and you also have a low pass and high pass filter as well. These are not dynamic but you can uh, use them to roll off the high end. You can actually go up to 120 dB per octave. So almost like a brick wall here. You can see how flat that curve is. So if you're looking to chop off the low end here, boom, that, that low end is gone. There are actually a few more things I just want to point out to you. You do have oversampling here or upsampling as it's called the Melda production, and you have it for normal and for rendering as well. You do have processing with all of these different methods, left, right, mid, side, and so forth. You do have automatic gain compensation. And if you hit set and then play the audio, it will just make sure that you're always gonna be hearing at a consistent level so you can focus on what you're doing in the mix rather than you know your ears reacting to something really loud in a more positive light than something a little bit quieter. And then you have a built-in limiter as well. And then you have up to A through H in terms of A, B, and capabilities. And one other thing, uh, everything is resizable here, the entire plugin window, all of these views over here can be shown or hidden. Uh, you do have so much that is automatable inside of your plugin and pretty much everything that can be automatable can be uh, triggered via MIDI. So it really is an all-in-one EQ. And if you have M Dynamic EQ, you don't need another Dynamic EQ. It's just that good. But anyway, I'm going to leave the video there for now. I hope you learned something. And as usual, I'm Joshua Casper, and I'll see you in the next video.